The title of my message is The Wrath of the Lamb. Kibbles are verse 16 and 17. Okay, let's read the Kibbles together, uh, please. They caused the mountains and the rocks, hold on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne from the wrath of the Lamb. The great day of their wrath has come, you can stand. Okay, try to say from your memory. Okay, so you go. They caused the mountains and the rocks, hold on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne from the wrath of the Lamb. The great day of their wrath has come. Who can stand? Thank God for blessing our start of revelation until now. In chapter one, we could hear the first message of revelation. Look, he's coming with the clouds and every eye will see him. And we could see the vision of the Lord Jesus Christ glorified, ministering his church. In chapter two and three, chapters two and three, Christ spoke each specific message, a specific message to each church of the seven. And finally he said to each church, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The Spirit speaks to each church of every generation. And we may be able to hear what the Spirit says based on Christ's messages. We pray that we might become like Philadelphia Church, which with new strength have kept Jesus' word and have not, have not denied his name. In chapters 4 and 5, we could see the beautiful, glorious heavenly worship by all the angels and other creatures. Particularly, you could hear a new song by the 12, 24 elders, which represent the redeemed people of the church. They sang, We are worthy to take the scroll and open the seals because you are slain. With your blood, we you purchased men, we purchased for God, persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God. They will reign on the earth. We pray that we might become true priests of the land with a new song in our hearts following him in obedience to him. From chapter six, all the way to the end of Revelation, it is concerning, as written in chapter one, verse one, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. And written in chapter 1, 19, right, therefore, what will take place later? And for one, I show you what must take place after this. So these events are future events, specific and unique, only called in human history. And these events lead to end time and Christ kingdom honors an eternal kingdom of God. We we'll continue to pray that through the study of Revelation, we may be able to read the signs of the times and see the way our world is headed. Today's passage is about opening of seeds. The lambs open of the seeds from the first to sixth. At the, op at the opening of the seas, a judgment began. Again, only called in human history. When people think that 
we are in apex of human civilization. The best time in history is the dream of utopia honored by human efforts. The, civil, the humanity hits the bottom with no morality at all in the name of moral revolution. People become and live more and more like animals. God's judgment has to come. Ultimately, with the return of Christ to establish his kingdom on earth. First, the opening of the first four seats. First one to say, I watched when the lamb opened the first of the four living creatures. And I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, come. I looked and there before me was a white horse. His rider was, his rider held a bow. And he was given a crown. He rolled out as a conqueror and done conquest. Notably, there is a white horse, this rider with a crown. This written in Revelation chapter 19, I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse, whose name was whose name is a face French draw. With justice, he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and over his head are many crowns. So this written chapter 19, this is Jesus Christ, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But in Revelation chapter 6, at the opening of the seas, first year, it's a counterfeit one. First Messiah or Antichrist appears. But there is one clear difference. Christ Jesus has many crowns, but this counterfeit one has one crown given. Interestingly, this uh, horse one held a bow, but no arrow. The absence of an arrow speaks of a bloodless victory. He rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. So conquest is emphasized. A kind of conquest. Conquest without shedding blood. A conquest of peace, world peace, yet a disguised peace. From several decades ago, people hear about global world, global peace, global government, any one world government with new world order. This seems to be more and more possible to the amazing development of scientific technology. The effort and aim can be good that all people on earth live, they live peacefully, becoming one politically, ideologically, and even religiously. We hear much about acceptance and tolerance. People say, don't think about sexual different practices. Don't think about different religion practices. Why not just accept all and live harmoniously? In the atmosphere, there's no tolerance for those who have clear morality. 
apply the claim tolerance for all those who are carefree in whatever lifestyle they have. The trend of the world is uh, world peace. It's, it's not possible in a true sense because uh, peace comes from right relations with God. It's a disguised peace. In the Old Testament, when there was no peace, first prophets delivered the message of peace, saying, peace, peace. And Jeremiah cried out to God on sovereign Lord. Prophets keep telling them, you will not see the sword or suffer famine. Indeed, I'll give you lasting peace in the place. Jeremiah cried out to God. They said, I'll give you lasting peace. And sovereign God said, prophets are lying, prophets are lies in my name. I have not sent them or appointed them or spoken to them. In the same way, God's judgment are coming, but people say more and more, hold the peace, no attempt, or hold one world government. For a global unity, it is likely that everyone is going to work together for, sci for science, medicine, economics, and food. But we should know that religious ecumenism is a key player in world peace and global unity because uh, people can keep apart. People Religion can people keep people apart. So there got, there's got to be somehow a barrier coming down between religions. <clears throat> so there is active movement toward one world religion. It's um, toward tolerance for everything. But intolerance for true Christian. The intolerance will accelerate in the process. However, as we studied, true Christians are raptured before forced peace comes. So the enemies of, enemies of God will think that a big barrier has been removed. But it's easier to work. These all see trend of the world. Peace, disguised peace, led by Antichrist. Actually, he's working behind the scene. We will think of this more. There have been many Antichrists throughout history. John said in First John chapter 2, Dear friends, this is the last hour. As you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now, many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. Then he said, continually, who is the liar? Is the man who denies that Jesus is the Christ? Such a man is the Antichrist. He denies the Father and the Son. Historically, Hitler was considered an Antichrist and some others. <clears throat> However, Antichrist, there will be a specific, an ambiguous person that shows at the end time. Paul said in Thessalonians chapter 2, you can read this part responsibly, carefully read, I'll read first. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way. For that day will not come until the rebellion occurs, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. 
and a little of his own with gold, silk, or everything that is belonged to God or worship, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Okay, and then says, and now you know that you know what is holding him back. So that he may be revealed at the proper time. And then and then the lowest one will be revealed. For whom the Lord Jesus Christ will overthrow with the breath of his mouth, destroy by the splendor of his coming. So here you see, same expression is written three times. See, the man of lawlessness is revealed. And she may be revealed at the proper time. Lowest one will be revealed. Three times it's written. But in Revelation chapter 6, the Antichrist does not set himself up against God, proclaiming to be God, to be worshipped. He disguised himself, just spreading world peace. And he shows himself clearly at the, at the middle point of tribulation, written in, later on, in chapter 13 of Revelation. It's clearly written about Antichrist as a beast. At this point, he does not show himself clearly. Also, it's very helpful to read Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. You may see this. He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. His one seven is seven years. They will talk about it. And in the middle of the seven, he put an end to sacrifice offering. Remember, in the middle of the seven, he put an end to sacrifice and offering. And on a wing of the temple, he set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. At the Midpoint. He clearly shows himself up, setting up himself up against God. And this is Antichrist is described as a little horn in chapter 7. And in chapter 8, the king of fire fears continents. Or in NIV, a stone faced king, a master of intrigue. In chapter 9, the prince. Who is to come? And chapter 11, the willful king, or the king who does whatever he wants. And let's think about seven years of a tribulation. Where seven years come from? So we can refer to Daniel chapter 9, 25 and 26. See, carefully see. Know and understand this. From the issue of the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, until the anointed one, the ruler, comes, there will be seven sevens. Again, the seven, seven years, and sixty-two sevens. It will be rebuilt with the streets and a trend, but in times of trouble. Then, 26. After the six to sevens, the anointed one will be cloth and will have nothing. The people of the ruler will come. This is the people of the prince who is coming. Antichrist will destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end will come like a flood. War will continue until the end. And desolations have been decreed. And as you read, he will come from a covenant with many for one seven. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice. So when you read Daniel, there are two kinds of weeks, weeks of days, and weeks of years. For example, chapter 10, 
Daniel, uh, Daniel mourned for three weeks. That's 21 days. But here, chapter 9, in NIV, it says seven sevens, but in other translations, it's weeks written. This is when the flow of the passage, it is, it is its years. And there are seven sevens, six to sevens, and then last one seven, three parts. The time span is, is from Atatoxis decree. He gave a decree. He allowed Nehemiah to go back to Jerusalem, rebuild the temple, uh, rebuild the city. That's the decree. From that time on, that's 445 BC to the Messiah's kingdom to the end. Three parts, seven, seven, seven weeks or seven, 49 years. So this from 445 BC to the closing of Nehemiah's career or the end of Malachi, last part of the Old Testament, in the end of Malachi's ministry, or closing of Old Testament. So if you subtract 49 from 445 BC, then it comes 9396 BC after 77. So we say between Old Testament and New Testament, there are 400 years silence, no revelation from God. Yeah. Closing of Malachi, end of Old Testament. That's 77, seven, 49 years. And second part, six to seven. That's 434 years more. If you add 49, then it total 483 years. We take it from 445 BC, then it comes to year AD 30, when Jesus entered Jerusalem. The days is 173, 8, 880 days. Multiply 360, that's Jewish calendar. That's fulfilled when Jesus entered Jerusalem to die on the cross. That's shift to sevens. The one seven remained, that's last. See the part for the end of time. The Messiah will cut off, he died. And the final seven years of the 70th week, the time of Antichrist, time of tribulation, the seven. When we read Revelation, the second half of the seven years tribulation is described as a time, times and a half time, the three and a half years, or 42 months, the same or 12, 1260 days. In three ways, it's described. Second half. First things are written in the Bible. And here, the conquest by the Antichrist. So since the Antichrist shows himself clearly at the middle point, of the generation, it's great to think that world peace or one world government movement is done by a system like UN, led by Antichrist by working behind the scene. We thought about peace, world peace. Then in verses two and four, when the land opened the second seal, I heard. The second living creature say, come. The another horse came out, fired red. His rider was given power to take peace from the earth, to make men slay each other. To him was given a large sword. So the opening of the second seal brings about judgment of war. Of course, there are many battles and wars in history, including World War I and World War II. By this time, the world will be in a greater scale, more severe and dreadful, and people cannot think about peace anymore. He says, peace was taken from the earth. There seems no peaceful place on the earth. We think about nuclear weapons. We can see the severity of the battle 
and people storing each other can be uh, realistic. Right now, thank God that we are living in a peaceful country. Thank God, but there will be a time of war coming. Then, when the land opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come. I looked and there before me a black horse. His rider was holding a pair of scales. Then I heard what sounds like a voice among the seven little living creatures. A coat of wheat for a day's wages, and three coats of barley for a day's wages. And do not damage the oil and the wine. The skills signify, symbolize trade. On the entire day wage, this way, entire wage needed two pound, two pound of heat. It's called two pound of heat. And two pound of heat can produce a row or, or, or two loaves of bread. So high price of heat and barley indicate famine. And it's so severe that an ordinary man can barely survive using his whole day wages, maybe 150 dollars to buy a day's meal just for himself, cannot now for his, support his family. So severe worldwide famine. But still we say God's mercy that probably wine and oil can be, can be basic things for cooking, but then are not damaged. Did you eat breakfast this morning? I know, oh, I, but I be you, no problem with eating three meals a day. If you can't eat three meals a day, thankful to God. But there will be time of famine. Mm -hmm. And then, when the land opened the fourth chair, I was the first living creature say, come. I looked and there from your pale horse. His rider was named Death. Hades was following closely behind him. They were given power over the force of the earth to kill by sword, famine, and plague, and by the wild beasts of the earth. Here, the first opening of the fourth seal is the judgment by death, killing a fourth of mankind. Now, a, a billion, two billion. How? It says, by sword, famine, and plague, and wild beasts of the earth. So this fourth seal opening judgment is related to second and third seal opening. So then famine and plague is included, killing one fourth of the world population. Even mankind are killed by wild beasts. It's tragic. Think about creation order. God's creation order is to do everything. Man might do everything, including wild beasts. But when creation order is destroyed, mankind can be killed even by wild beasts. So when you think about these four seeds, these are characterized horses and riders. Horses are representative of power, magnificence, majesty, and conquest. The horse and its rider. Yet the rider is not necessarily, necessarily a person. As you've seen, the rider of a fiery fierce one, giving power to take away peace, the rider of a brothers holding his scales, a pair of scales, and rider of a parents going to death. So horses represent not individuals, but a force. Where is the force? Family is force. And so is death. Which means when you think about right horse, this rider, and Christ does not show himself, show himself clearly at this point, but later at the midpoint. The horse can be a horse. So at the opening of horses, the horses are forces or powers. Peace power, war power, feminine power, death power. 
And then you see they're given. Crown is given, sword is given, power is given. Also, they now appear by themselves at random. No, at the command of each of the four living creatures, come, then he, he shows that God is in control. He's a sovereign, he's in control. Then, second, opening of the fifth and sixth seals. Now, they opened, then he opened the fifth seal. I saw on the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God, and the testimony they had maintained. They cried out in loud voice, Sovereign Lord, how long? Sovereign Lord, hold on true. Until we judge the evidence of the earth and avenge our blood. Each of them was given a white robe, and they were told to wait a little longer until the number of their fellow servants, the brothers, to be killed as they had been, was completed. Opening of the fifth seal is related to vengeance due to persecution. While one fourth of mankind was killed, Persecution for Christians became was very severe. Yet they were willing to use their lives to keep their faith in Jesus Christ. Those who have been unclear about their faith became very clear for their faith through undergoing time of tribulation. Even there must be new believers. They were even ready to die for their newfound, newfound faith in Jesus Christ. They were killed, when they were killed, simply because they kept their faith in Jesus Christ and the word of God, there was a great injustice. But they interest the judgment to God, saying, how long, sovereign Lord? And each of them was given white robe, which symbolizes purity and victory. They are purified in Jesus Christ and victorious, and they are told to wait a little longer. We should know that when we read the Bible, God of Scripture is the God of vengeance. It's written in Revelation chapter 32. It is mine to avenge, I will pay. In other translations, vengeance is mine and retribution. In the same chapter, two more times, I take vengeance on my adversaries. And again, I will take vengeance on its enemies. God is the God of vengeance. And in Luke's Gospel, chapter 21, it's written, For these days, for these are days of vengeance to fulfill all that is written. Remember this, we'll talk more about it. These days are these are days of vengeance to fulfill all that is written. And in, at the opening of his seal, they are crying out, praying for vengeance. And when you point, then he says, I watched when he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black, a set cloth made of gold hair. The whole moon turned red black. The stars in the sky fell to us as if eight figures dropped a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. The sky receives like a scroll rolling up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. So, this open of sixth seal judgment is different from all the others in that it was solely by God's direct intervention without human beings involved. God acted without man. The judgment is through astronomical, astronomical natural disasters involving the earthquake, the sun, moon and stars, and sky, and island, and mountain. It's uh, too terrifying to imagine. And we quote in chapter 21, there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. Many faint from terror, offensive of what is coming, in the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Terror is being scared to death. Heavenly bodies will be shaken, definitely, always will be shaken. 
So when you think about opening of six series from one to six, this is a very much same with what you just said when you talk about the signs of the end of the age between Matthew, Luke, and Mark. Let's think about what's written in Matthew Gospel. Let's read responsibly. I read first, let's carefully. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? What will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Okay. And then he says, you hear of wars and rumors wars, nations will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Okay. Famines and earthquakes in various places, yes. And then when you read Luke's gospel, pestilences included. And Jesus said, all these are beginning of birth pains, Jesus said. So this part covers the first verses between Revelation. See, disguised peace, <coughs> war, famine, death by sword, famine, and plague. The first verses this part covers. And this pain can cover the first half of the tribulation. We think more about it. And then Jesus said here, See, then you will be handed over to, the, to be persecuted and put to death. You will be hated by all nations because of me. This is related to the fifth seal. The martyr soul is crying out to God for vengeance. How long? And Jesus said, and when you see this, when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that caused desolation spoken to the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. It's so again about the point of tribulation between Daniel. So the revelation of desolation that is identified by Daniel in Daniel chapter 7 and spoken, mentioned by Jesus in Matthew chapter 24. Luke did not write. Luke wrote in Luke's gospel the succeeding events calling the time as a day of a time of vengeance. Mm -hmm. In saying this, Luke was uh, talking about after the midpoint, after the abomination of desolation, after midpoint, there's a second half. The fear of God's vengeance really hits following the midpoint. And so, fifth seal, the crying of vengeance, fifth seal deals with slaughter of Christians. There starts, the Christian starts in the first half, and then it becomes wholesale massacre following the midpoint. And they keep killing Christians as long as they can until the end. And after this, we are talking about Organization that caused desolation, Jesus said about, mentioned, the signs, the change of the sun and moon and stars. He says, immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from the sky, the heavenly bodies will be shaken. This opening up six to see. And then he says, at the time, the sign of the son of man will appear in the sky and all the nations of the earth will mark. Here we see, when sixth seal was opened, it's very like, very much like coming to the end of the tribulation. Here the remaining of seventh seal opening, that includes seven trumpet judgments, which might be pulled out in several months, and that is followed by several, uh, seven, Three judgments, 
which it might possibly pull out in seven, several weeks. We think more about it. But here, the sequence of revelation is the same, absolutely consistent with the changes delivered this course between Matthew 24, Mark chapter 13, and Luke 21. Parallels are identical. Wow. Jesus said about it, and revelation was shown to John. Identical, absolutely. And as we see, the response of the people, and the kings of, then the kings of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, every slave, and every free man, hid among the caves and rocks of the mountains. And they caused the rocks and mountains fall on us and hide us from the face of him who is sits on the throne and the rest of the land, the great day of their rest has come. Who can stand? Even at the last point of human civilization, there are slaves. So all sorts of people seem to recognize God and the land and their rest. But they do not want to repent. They hid among in the caves and among the rocks, as Adam and Eve hid among the trees of the garden. And they make every effort to free, escape from the rest of God and the Lamb. Instead of praying to God, they call out the mountains and rocks. You see, the disposition of a fallen man. What the response? We got rest of the response. One thing is clear. Now, man is having his day this day, but there will be no day. One central theme of scripture, prophetic theme is the coming of great day of God's wrath, known the day of the Lord. These are prophesied many times in Old Testament. Several things you see in Isaiah, see the day of the Lord is coming, a cruel day with wrath and fierce anger. And again, in Joel, the day of the Lord is great, is dreadful, who can endure it? And in Amos, what you who long for the day of the Lord, why do you long for the day of the Lord? That day will be darkness, not light. And even Peter says in the New Testament, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will destroy the war, and everyone will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare, burned. This one article on March 23rd, 1989. An asteroid, a half mile across, mountain size asteroid, missed Earth at just 700,000 miles. No one saw it coming. If it arrived a mere six hours later, it would have wiped our civilization. Nine days later, scientists found it. But when time, when time comes, the earth will be destroyed. We don't know how Bhagavad said about that. People think that the future will become better and better. But because the Bible, it never becomes better, but worse and worse. Spiritually, morally, even politically, socially, and economically. Time of God's judgment is coming. In the end. And as you know, revelation is the book of prophecy. Still will happen, must happen according to prophecy. Time of tribulation is coming. It's an honest prayer that we may be prepared to meet the Lord in the air. For the glorious moment it will be to meet the Lord in the air, in court. And people become more and more unbelieving. Yet there are God's chosen ones to be saved. We must find them and share the message of our salvation and judgment so that they may be able to escape from the rest of God and the rest of the land. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for your study, Revelation chapter 6. There's opening of series, one by one. Six series. We thought about, first of all, world peace, disguised peace, 
war, famine, death, vengeance at your disasters. Father, this is what Jesus taught by us, clearly written in Revelation. Too terrifying, but you want us to believe this. And now is man's day. Day of the Lord is coming. Dear Father, you really want us to prepare ourselves that we can expect to meet the Lord in the air. Also, there are your people, people seem to be more and more believing, there are your people chosen by God to be saved. Help us to find them. Share the message of salvation judgment. So then you also be able to, they may be able to escape from the wrath of God and of the Lamb. Father, fill us with your hope, have clear attitude as you live in this world. Thank you for yours. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.